Do you struggle to study for the theory test? Do you want to know the best way to study for the theory test? Do you want help to study for the theory test? Do you lack time, lack discipline studying for your theory test? Well, these videos that I'm going to be doing is for you. So keep watching. Hi, I'm Dorian from Think to Success where I help you study for your theory test, breaking it down, keeping it simple to give you the best possible chance of passing your theory test first time. In these set of videos I'm going to do is a study series with me where I'm going to be doing a 20 question mock test on each of the 14 categories the theory test holds to give you the best possible chance of passing your theory test first time. So keep watching, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so when I do the videos you'll be the first to know. So I'm going to jump onto my desktop and in this video I'm going to be doing motorway rules. I'm going to do a 20 question on motorway rules. Before we get started breaking the theory down, it's always about safety. Safety, 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 safety. So when you get a question, you're looking for a safe option, common sense answer. The one thing I will add about the theory test, they're not trying to trick you. A lot of people always say they're trying to trick me. It's a trick question. There's no tricks. It's black and white. It's either safe or it isn't. There's no gray areas. When you take your driving lessons, there's going to be gray areas and you have to move that gray area into the safe bracket. But for the theory test, it's either going to be safe or unsafe. And we're looking for the safest option. Let's get started. Motorway rules. You are towing a trailer along a three lane motorway. When may you use the right hand lane? Right, when you are towing or heavy goods vehicle, you can only use the left lane, middle lane, or lanes one and two. They can wear the either way. So lanes one, lanes two, or left and middle. That's the only time you can use, sorry, that's the only lanes you can use. You can't use the right hand lane. And the reason for that, you can't do top speeds. If you're towing a caravan, for example, on a motorway or heavy goods vehicle on a motorway, the fastest you can go is 60 miles an hour when the motorway speed for cars is 70. So the question is asking when may you use the right hand lane? The only time you can use the right hand lane is when there's normally road, when there's lane closures. And the reason when there's lane closures, the speed limit gets automatically dropped because obviously a lane's closed off, there's more congestion. So we're looking for something along those lines when the lane is closed off. When you can maintain a high speed, no. When there are lane closures is what I said. But remember, always read the following answers just because that's what I said. Sometimes there's just two similar answers and one has a bit more information and that's the one you would go for. So always read all the answers before you commit to the final one. When large vehicles are left in the centre lane, no. When there's slow moving traffic, no. So it's going to be about one. What colour are reflective studs between the lanes and the motorway? Right. This question comes up a lot in different ways, but it's always about the studs when it does come up. You've got four colours. You've got red, white, amber and green. Now, if you struggle to remember studs, when they ask you the question in the rule test, they're always going to have the word motorway. They have to have the word motorway on there. And if you can't remember the studs as individual studs, remember what I'm about to tell you. The word motorway has the colour studs in the correct order. So with motorway, you got R for red studs on the left, which is your left lane. W for white is your middle lane and amber is your right hand lane. If you can remember that, if green comes up, then you now know green is your slip road because it's not a lane. Green is your slip road to leave the motorway or join the motorway. So this question says, what color are the reflective studs between the lanes on the motorway? So between if you go back to what I just said, the RWA in between is W, stands for white. So it's going to be the white answer. When would you use an emergency refuge area on a smart motorway? Other little tip I would give you. There's little nuggets in the question sometimes. So you need to read the question. If you can take a step back and just read the question carefully rather than reading it, dive into the answers. So read the question carefully, look for little nuggets. The key word there is emergency. 
So it has to be some type of emergency. Someone's taken ill, you've got a puncture, your car's broken down. That's an emergency. Not to take a break, not to sleep, not to rest, not to take a mobile phone call. That's not classed as emergency. So we're looking for something along the lines that's gonna lead to an emergency. To stop and check where you are, that's not an emergency. If you think you've been involved in road rage incident, that technically is not an emergency. To make a private phone call, not an emergency in case of an emergency or breakdown. Now, another little tip, you've got emergency in the question, you've got emergency in the answer. It kind of tallies. It doesn't always work, but you have to shortlist it as a possible answer if you was in between two answers. That's got to be going down as a possible answer, but in this case, it is the answer. What should you do when you're going through a contraflow system on a motorway? Right, let me just quickly explain what a contraflow is because again, a lot of people get confused with what a contraflow is. In driving terms, contra means going against. You've got two signs, but on this one, because we're doing miles, well, just keep it simple. Contra means going against. Now, the question says you're on a motorway. You've got a crash barrier in the middle and it's been opened up because of roadworks, so you're going on the other side. So you're going up on the other side of the carriageway, the traffic's coming down against you. So you're going against the flow of traffic. That's what contra flow means. There'd normally be, be cones separating you and the traffic coming down. So you're looking for something along the lines of reduce your speed, that's the answer they give you sometimes, or um, keep a further distance between you and the car in front because obviously you're on the other side of the road. So that's what we're looking for, either reduce your speed or keep a bigger distance between you and the car in front. Just to read the question again, what should you do when you're going through a contra flow system on the motorway? Use dipped headlights, no. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead, yes. Stay close to the vehicle ahead to reduce queues, no. Switch lanes to keep traffic flowing. You shouldn't be switching lanes, especially in a congested area, because like I said, you're going against the flow of traffic. Your vehicle breaks down on the motorway and you manage to stop on a hard shoulder. What should you do if you use your mobile phone to call for help? Right, so we're looking for safe option. Wait in the car for emergency services to arrive. You should never wait in your car on the motorway. You should stay away from your car, um, preferably behind a barrier or far on a grass verge as possible if there's no barrier. Stand at the rear of the vehicle while making a phone call. Again, we should be staying away from the car, so that shouldn't be the option. Check your location from the nearest marker post beside the hard shoulder. That is what's going to be because you need to check your, if you're going to use your mobile phone, you need to check the marker post for your location so you can give the person the numbers they require so they know where to come and get you. Phone a friend and ask them to come and collect you and that's going to be a no. You're on a smart motorway. What does it mean when a mandatory speed limit is displayed above the hard shoulder? Right, with this one, Smart motorways is just digital information for drivers. That's what a smart motorway is. It gives you digital information live while you're driving and it can change the speed limits and tell you lanes are closed. That's what smart motorway is in simple terms. Now, the question is, you've got a mandatory red circle, 50 over the hard shoulder. That means you can use the hard shoulder. If it's an X over the hard shoulder, it means you cannot use a hard shoulder. So in this case, they check the cameras, they realize no one's in it, in the hard shoulder, so now you can use it. So that's what we're looking for, something along those lines. You can pull up in this lane to answer a mobile phone. You never, you can use your mobile phone in the motorway. Um, the hard shoulder can be used as a running lane. That's what it's called, by the way, it's called a running lane. So it's gonna be that one, but read the other answers. You can park on hard shoulder if you feel tired, again, not safe and you should never be doing that. Shouldn't travel in this lane. If it had an X, you shouldn't travel in this lane because you've got the 50, you can. So it's gonna be the answer we already ticked. Which vehicle should use the left-hand lane on a three lane motorway? So just repeat that question, because again, when this comes up, a lot of people get confused. Which vehicles should use the left-hand lane of a three lane motorway? And the answer is, every vehicle unless you are overtaking. I'll just repeat that. Every vehicle should be using the left-hand lane unless they are overtaking. And when you overtake, you get back to the left. Slow moving vehicles only, no. Any, any vehicle that isn't overtaking, yes. 
emergency vehicles only, no large vehicles only. So it's going to be that one. When are you allowed to stop on the motorway? This is similar to the question before, and that's how the theory test works as well. They can reword the question slightly. Sometimes it's a different answer. Sometimes it's the same answer, but just because it's worded differently, you got to be very careful with that. And that's one of the reasons why you mustn't memorize your answers because when it's worded differently, it can throw you off. So when are you allowed to stop on the, um, on the hard shoulder? It's an emergency, similar to the last answer we had previously. When are you allowed to stop on the motorway? So be very careful with this question because it's not they're not talking about a hard shoulder they're talking about a motorway let me just read that again to clarify when are you allowed to stop on a motorway the only time you are allowed to stop on a motorway is when you've been signaled by a traffic sign so for example you have a red x across all of the the lanes it means do not go any further in that particular lane or no one goes any further if it's a red x across every lane so you're looking for traffic signs or signals telling you to stop so when you are seen to do so by traffic signals that's the first one let's still read the rest when you wish to pick up a jacket you shouldn't be doing that and um, when you need to walk and get fresh air definitely shouldn't be doing that and when you need to use your mobile phone again no you stopped an emergency refuge area what must you do before you rejoin the carriageway so this one use the emergency telephone that's going to be a possible one so i'm going to tick that give an arm signal as you're moving off no switch on your vehicle headlights no move away with your hazard lights no the reason why you want to use the emergency phone so then they can check the cameras and maybe close up a lane for you to rejoin safely your vehicle broke down on a hard shoulder of a motorway but has now been repaired. How should you rejoin the main carriageway? Gain speed on the hard shoulder before you before moving out to the carriageway. Right, the reason why you want to gain speed on the hard shoulder is so you can match your speed to the cars already there. If you think about it, you're doing 10, 15 miles now and then you're gonna mirror signal right to join someone who's a lane that's really doing 70 miles now that's a major accident to happen so it's not safe by driving in the hard shoulder first get into 60 65 and you can rejoin the motorway with cars already doing 17 miles an hour so you're going to fit in nicely so it's going to be this one as a safe option but we still read the other answers move it onto the carriageway using your hazard warning lights no move onto the carriageway then build up your speed no wait on the hard shoulder until someone flash the headlights at you they shouldn't be flashing the headlights at you full stop so you could be waiting all day long with that one so it's going to be that one What's the national speed for a car or motorcycle on the motorway? The national speed limit for a car on a motorway or a motorbike is 70 miles an hour. With that one, we don't need to read any further because it's only going to be one speed. So it's 70 miles an hour on that one. What's the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? Same question. What happens when you do a random um, mock test on the categories where well, it's the same 70 miles an hour? Traffic officers operate on a motorway and some primaries in England and Wales. What are they authorised to do? Right, be very careful. These aren't, these aren't police officers. They're traffic officers. They have no legal powers. There's another question that comes up. How do they get you to stop? They stay behind you, flash the lights and point to the left. That's how they get you to stop. They won't cut you up. But we're getting off topic. This is a motorway question. What are they authorised to do? They are authorised to stop and direct traffic, basically. So we're looking for something along those lines. Repair broken down vehicles on the motorway, no. Stop and direct anyone on the motorway. That's what we just discussed. Stop and arrest drivers who break the law. Remember, they've got no legal powers to arrest you and issue fake penalties. Again, they've got no legal powers to be doing that. So it's going to be that one. Which vehicles aren't allowed to use the right hand lane or a three lane motorway? That goes back to the previous question in the earlier part of this test. So we're looking at heavy goods and towing vehicles aren't allowed to use the, um, the right hand lane unless there's lane closures. Vehicles towing a trailer. So if you're towing, you're not allowed to use it. But again, read the others. Motorcycles and sidecar outfits. Small delivery vans and motorcycles. So it's going to be about one. Where are amber reflective studs found in the motorway, which we discussed earlier on? So the question is starting to be repeated, but again, it just tests your knowledge because technically if you've got the first one right, you should be getting the second right. But let's see how many of you remembered what I explained to you previously in the video. So remember, if you don't remember what where the amber studs are, go to your motorway. They're always going to give you the motorway, so you don't even have to spell it. 
it's there in front of you on the screen when you do your real test and remember it's in order red on the left w's in the middle amber's on the right amber starts a for amber so you're looking for the right hand side between the crash barrier something along those lines so between the acceleration lane and the carriageway remember the acceleration lane to the slip road that's going to be green between the central reservation and the carriageway the central reservation is on the right hand side that's where the amber studs are double tick that but just check between each pair of lanes that's going to be white w's in the middle between the hard shoulder and the carriageway which be r and that's on your left hand side when would you use the right hand lane or a three lane motorway using the right hand lane on the motorway is for overtaking that's the only time you're going to be using this when you're overtaking so can you looking for something along those lines when you're turning right you can't turn right on the motorway so it won't be that one when you are trying to save fuel i don't understand how you save fuel by being in the right hand lane when you're traveling above the speed limit remember safety if you're traveling above the speed limit, you're breaking the law that can't be safe when you're overtaking so it's got to be that one You're in the right hand lane of a three lane motorway. What do these overhead signs mean? So you're in the right hand lane, so you're one with the arrow. These signs are advising you and the temporary saying 50 miles now. So your left hand lane do 50, middle lane do 50. This arrow says change lanes. Now you have to be very, very careful in the theory test. There's two similar answers in the real test. One says change lanes and one says change lanes when safe to do so. So obviously you're going to choose the one that says to do, do so because the one that says change lanes suggests that you're going to do it straight away. But obviously the one that says change lanes when safe to do so, you're checking to see if it's safe to change lanes so we're looking for something along those lines use the hard shell until you pass a hazard no there are roadworks 50 meters 55 yards ahead no move to the left hand lane and reduce your speed to 50 that's a possible leave a motorway where the next exit no so we're talking about this one here what should you do that's my dyslexia kicking in what should you do when you are approaching roadworks in the motorway always use a hard shoulder should not be used a hard shot in an emergency unless it's an emergency speed up to clear the area quickly if you're speeding up you could be breaking a speed limit obey the speed limit and stay very close to the vehicle in front let me just answer again what should you do when you are approaching roadworks in a motorway always use a hard shoulder no speed up to clear the area quickly no obey the speed limit it's going to be that one out of all of them that's the safest one stay very close to the vehicle in front you should never stay close to the vehicle in front regardless your vehicle breaks down a motorway and you need to call for help. Why might it be better to use an emergency roadside telephone rather than a mobile phone? Um, using a mobile phone will distract other drivers. No, mobile phones don't work on motorways. They do if there's um, coverage or signal. It allows easier location by the emergency services. It's going to be that one. It connects to your local garage. No, it doesn't. It's going to be this one um, because when you use the roadside um sos phones they're called you clock the it's free by the way when you use the roadside emergency phones and you clock the location number and they are more familiar with that than you phoning someone else that's why you are on a motorway that isn't subject to smart motorway regulations when should you use the hard shoulder so remember from previous question a smart motorway is digital information for drivers if it's not subject to a smart motorway regulations it means there's no digital signs so technically you should not be stopping in the hard shoulder unless it's an emergency so we're looking for something along those lines an emergency when you're stopping for a rest no we already established you don't stop for a rest on a um hard shoulder you should go to a service station when you are joining the motorway no that's what slip roads for when you are leaving the motorway again no that's what slip roads for for leaving and coming on and when you're stopping for an emergency again the work the emergency so hopefully you got some benefit from this as you saw i read the question some of the questions a couple of times because the wording can confuse you. Think about this, I do this every single week with my pupils in the classroom and I'm still reading the question on a, on a video that I'm recording. A couple of times, I'm not cutting it out to show you when I'm doing it live, I still have to read it a couple of times and reread the words, reread the questions. My advice to you guys is read the questions carefully. If you have to read it two or three times, so be it. 
read the answers carefully. If you have to go back and see if the answer makes sense with the question, so be it. You have 57 minutes in total in the real, in the real test. You've got plenty of time. When you're doing mock tests in this format, the categories, like I am, there's no time limit. So take your time, work it through. So many of you guys rush your answers. The question is why? Take your time, get it right, pass first time, relieve the stress, get onto your driving lessons. But as I said, I hope you got some benefit from that. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will try to address them. Go off and watch the next video that YouTube recommends. Remember, this is going to be a study with me series. So there's another one coming on a different category.